Okay, this time um, I want to tell you about the work done on an object by a varying force. So that's a little different. The work done on an object by a varying force. Uh, let's take a situation like this where we're going to move an object from A to B and um, the it, B is two meters away. A is at the origin. And um, the force that we're going to, there's going to be a bunch of forces on this object, and this is just one of the forces that will be on it, and they want to know the work done by this force. Now let's assume that this force is in the I direction. And so, um, so we won't worry about the fact that we have to only take a part of it because it's all in the I direction, and so is the displacement. So you just take the entire force times the displacement. Now, um, this is a little trickier because you see how the force, when you're here, the force is zero. Because if you put in x equals zero here, um, zero squared times three gives you zero newtons. And um, it, at one meter, halfway, the force is only, if you put in one, um, I'm thinking that that's going to be uh, three newtons right there. It's only three newtons. But at two meters, two squared is... Um, four meters squared, and then when you multiply by this constant here, that's going to give you 12 newtons. So zero newtons, three newtons, 12 newtons. So that's going to be um, doing a different amount of work with each little, um, with each little distance. And so um, let's look at the graph of this. The graph of this, it looks like this. So the at one meter, it's three newtons, but at two meters, it's 12 newtons. Well, as you might guess, the work done by this force is the area underneath this curve. And um, we will need to integrate to get the area underneath this curve. Notice how it doesn't do as much work in the first meter as it does in the second meter. The second meter, it does a lot more work than the first meter. So you can't just take, you can't just say that it's going to be 12 newtons times 2 meters. If you'd say that the work will be 24 newton, newton meters of work, if you just take the last force times the, the total displacement, that gets you 24 joules. But that would mean that the whole area is equal to the work done. And you know what? It just didn't do that much work. So here's... This is what we do. We either can, you can look at it as we're going to take an integral to get the area underneath the curve. And what we're really doing is we are um, just finding the work for each little bit along the way. So the work there, the work there, the work there, the work there, for each little bit along the way. Now, um, <coughs> even in that little bit, the, the force varies. And so what I really need to do is make these little displacements infinitesimally small. The work done over this little distance is dw. Anytime I want something to be really, really tiny, I'm going to put a d in front of it. Um, so that's dw. It's not just work. It's a very, very tiny work. And why is it a very tiny work? It's not because the force is small. The force is big. The force, you know, right there might be, you know, two newtons or something. But it's because over that little distance, you get a little work done because you're, 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 it's not S, it's DS. So it's F times DS. So the work done just for just one of these little guys is going to be F times DS. Now, um, as you might guess, once I figure out what the work is for each one of these, I'll just sum them up and get the total work done by all these little works. So what I'm saying is, I'm going to sum up to get the total work done. I will sum up all the DWs. Or in other words, I'm going to sum up all the DWs. But isn't this just the area underneath this curve? If that were a dx, isn't this just the area underneath this curve? It is. 
So let's let's find this. The way you do this then work is the most the the general equation for work is that the work is the sum of a bunch of little works. Now the little works would be f dot ds. This is the most general equation for work. Most general equation for work. You see, if we do have um, a constant force, if we do have a constant force, and if it's in the direction of ds, then um, let's first say if it's in the direction of ds, then this is just f times ds. And if it's a constant force, you can pull any constants out of an integral. So if it's constant, um, you can pull it out. And so you, it does go to this. Sum up all the ds's. It goes to this if f is constant and in the same direction as ds. But this is just saying sum up all the little displacements. Well, when you sum up all the little displacements, doesn't this give you this? Just the total displacement? It does. Now back to our problem. We would like to know how much work that force does in moving at two meters. So this is how it works. I'm going to take the integral, so the work done by F is the integral of um, three newtons over meters squared x squared dx. And I want to tell it to start adding these at x equals 0 and go to x equals 2 meters. Well, this gets you the area underneath this graph. That gets you the area, the entire area underneath this graph. If you only wanted the work done from 1 to 2 meters, if you just wanted this area, then the only difference would be is I'd put a 1 here instead of a, a 0. Okay, now at this point, let's take the antiderivative. So the work done, if I take the antiderivative, is going to be, um, I need an x cubed there, and this is going to be 3, this will be um, 1, Newtons over meters cubed. They're squared, rather. Does that work? Let me see if that works. I take the derivative just to see if I get this antiderivative. So, yep, that works. And then I got to remember that my boundary conditions are um, 0 meters, x equals 0 meters, and x equals 2 meters. Now I'll just put the 2 meters in first. So the work done. Let me first put in 2 meters. That gives me, uh, that's going to be 8 cubic meters. So that's going to be uh, 8 cubic, that's going to be 8 newton meters. Minus, now I put in the zero one, and the zero one gives me um, 0 newton meters. So that's 8 newton meters. Okay, one point on that. This is the answer, 8 newton meters. That's how I did that. Um, one point on that. Notice that had I just multiplied 12 times 2, that would have given me 24 newton meters. But you see this area right here? That area right there is not even half of 24. It's not even 12 newton meters. It's 8 newton meters. And that's because you're not really doing that much work until this last little bit. That's when you're doing most of your work. All right. Hope this made some sense. You might want to view it a second time.